Well, generally this would be seen as a house museum. You know, it, it has um, the two oldest historic houses in Hawaii on the, on the site, but it also has this amazing archives as part of it as well. And it's, so it's, uh, the official name is Hawaiian Mission Houses Historic Site and Archives. And that's a really important pairing because the archive uh, includes um, the largest collection of Hawaiian language books in the world. And it also has um, the letters and journals uh, and many of the records from the Hawaiian mission beginning in 1820. And uh, those are some of the best records to understanding the history of Hawaii in the 19th century and all the changes that were going on at that time. The stories that are here, the personal stories and everything, put you on the ground level so that you really get an understanding. I don't think you can get that in any other place. People just like stories in general, and that's what we're here to tell. We're here to tell the story of, of the missionaries and their interactions with Hawaiians and uh, the role that they played in Hawaii's history. Uh, the museum collection is over 10,000 individual pieces, including our uh, historical artifacts, as well as our education uh, collection that we use for hands-on activities. For the most part, the, the objects come from, uh, from descendants uh, of the missionaries who, uh, who donate their family heirlooms. We get the actual objects from the families, from the individual people. Well, the house was a New England house. The house was basically mostly cut in New England and then shipped here in pieces, almost prefabricated, uh, erected here. And, um, some of the furnishings came from New England, other furnishings were actually made here, but they were New England farmers, and so they made furniture in the New England style, and it, it looks like a New England home that you would see in Massachusetts. One of the things that people uh, like the most about the exhibit, I think, is the dioramas. We've got two dioramas that show the, 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 uh, what the site looked like uh, in um, 1820 and then what the site looked like in 1853. The 1820 diorama is uh, grass hale and a fairly barren landscape. The 1850s uh, diorama shows um, the growth of the area, shows Kabaihao Church having been constructed of coral. So that diorama in and of itself shows uh, material progress over time at least. I think a museum's uh, responsibility to the community is um, to collect uh, things from the past that um, tell a broad story from different perspectives whenever possible. To get the community involved in its history, its own history, help them understand how they became the people they are today, what the historical roots of contemporary issues are, and I think that's something that you always got to go back and forth between. People aren't going to be his interested in history unless they see some relevance in their lives today. And so we always want to try to make that connection. Why should they care about this? We don't have a future without our past. And knowing the past and, and being aware of the history, um, I think will uh, help us to find um, you know, solutions or be able to work towards um, you know, a better society. Our mission is to honor the oldest living hula masters of, of Hawaii. Of course, they pass on with time, but we try to spend as much time with these elders as we can while they're still here to create this library, first-hand knowledge, authentic knowledge from straight from the horse's mouth. And we always dis we decided to, to create a video-based library because as hula people, we talk with our hands and our faces and you know it wasn't enough to just record their voices or take notes we really wanted to be video based so we're creating a cultural library that's built on these oral histories when a dancer feels that center you got to feel that center when you move and you got to feel that center you know it's it's when i watch when i watch the ballerinas and i watch the Spaniard, Spanish dancers, I think that the hula, everything is centered. You're focused. You're totally focused. There's a process of, of stewardship and culturally appropriate um, practices, you know, where you, you, you don't just come in there blazing and you, don't, and you don't make any assumptions about what you want them to tell you. 
You just let them talk. She's a little travel worn, but she's beautiful. Well, we used to make them out of the baby coconuts, you know, and the weight of the coconut was dry, and then make the puck in the back for the finger, and then paint the eyes, and then the different kinds of hair and, and different costume, uh huh? But I think she's kind of beautiful. <laughs> Her eyes are falling, no, they're not. <laughs> for a lot of them, too, it is, it is a process because they haven't thought about these things for a very long time. You're talking decades, sometimes five, six decades. So the more you think about things, the more you remember. Very unique style and so small. People think because it's Hula Preservation Society, it's just about hula, but it really is a lens into a time. It's, a, it's taking us back, it's getting an idea of what it was really like for them, for their grandparents, when things were different in Hawaii. So it's unbelievable how much has happened in the last 150 years, almost 200 years, and to have a little glimpse of what it was like and to know to be able to sit and listen to this group of people who are shaped by that, we'll never be able to be that way. You know? And so just, it's very valuable historically. It's not an archive that's intended to sit on the shelf. We're not collecting things just to have it sit there. We're collecting things to share it. Our focus continues to be on gathering because there's a time limit. And we have to focus on that. We don't have unlimited resources. So we're focusing on the gathering because otherwise we won't have anything to share come time. So we gotta focus on, on the, you know, spending the time with the elders while we can so that we have something to share later. One of the outgrowths of the oral history work, which is the core of the archive, has been that these kupuna that we work with have um, decided to entrust us with their personal collections, whether they before they pass or after they pass. But we now have probably over 20,000 things that are photographs, amazing photographs, um, artifacts, hula costumes, and all, all kinds of hula implements. And that wasn't something that we really thought about, but, they, but now we have a physical archive of, of things that also has to be digitized and cataloged and all, which is why, you know, it's part of our long-term goal. I can't really see an end in sight right now. I think there's, there's so much that we need to do that needs to be done, and there's nobody else doing it. So we know that we're in a position to make a difference.